Are you ready to restore your ancestors' image? Welcome to the seventh and final episode in the Walls Family Restoration Project. We've come a long way in restoring this image, and we're in the final stretch. Before we jump in, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell so that you'll get notified of all the videos we upload on Genealogy TV. If this is your first time here, I am Connie Knox, a lifelong genealogist, photographer, and video professional. Welcome, I am so glad you're here. Now, let's jump into that final restoration of the Walls Family Photo Project. In this video, I want to talk about trying to fix this little fella's eye. Uh, as a recap, uh, this is where we left off last. Uh, I did do a little dodge and burn on her face just to darken it slightly um, because it was a little too bright. But other than that, that is pretty much the same image and from the last episode. And just a reminder, we started out with this very torn image. Uh, we managed to pull up the corner and then we uh, managed to repair the tear. And we did spot removal and we did some levels adjustment and we uh, cleaned up uh, some of the missing corner that was up here. So what I want to do is try and repair this little guy's eye and this is Charles Walls. Uh, we are going to move him over and this is a very delicate process and this is one of the reasons why I wait until the very last minute. So some of what we want to do is kind of rebuild this cheek. This is where the tear of the photograph went right through here and we're zoomed in super far so you're going to see every little tiny blemish but what we're going to try and do is we're going to use the stamp tool and uh, ignore what you're seeing there we're going to try and get a very small brush and part of what we want to do is I'm going to copy the left side of his eye on this eye and basically we're going to try and paste part of it in on this side and if it doesn't look right we'll know it. We'll know it right away. Now this is still part of where that tear was so we need to darken probably right about there but we need to create a little bit lighter space. We're going to try and repair some of this cheekbone. In fact I'm going to do that right now. We're going to take and hold the um, Remember, we're in the clone tool. We're going to take and hold down the Alt key and click to sample that part of the cheek. And then I'm going to try and pull just a little bit of that color right back in here. And I think that's starting to make it look a little bit no more normal in this part of his cheek because he's got a shadow from his uh, jawline here. And again, this is a very delicate process. So you have to take it one step at a time. I'm going to sample his eyebrow. And then I'm going to move over here and come down slightly. We're making progress. I want to darken this spot right here and I'm trying to figure out exactly where to sample from in order to get that dark. I'm going to sample right there and see if this works. We have to keep playing with it till we come up with what looks like a reasonable eye. And you know what? That doesn't look too bad. I'm going to zoom out and see what that looks like. Now zooming out really helps because then you can see okay we've got too much white in here but the eye is coming along we're getting there it's gonna take some work I'm gonna sample a little bit from right here and put it right here I know that looks a little funny right now bear with me we're gonna sample right here we're gonna Pull this up a little bit. We're going to do a couple little clicks here to reduce that funny line and we're going to sample right here and we're going to bring this over here. Sample here. Click there. Sample. Paste there. It still looks too much of a line to me. So I, you know, you can keep playing with this. I'm going to sample this cheek and bring it over here and click again click again. Still too bright right in here. I'm going to sample. I'm going to make this bracket bigger. I'm going to and remember to keep your brush a really really soft edge. So this is turned all the way down so it's maximum softness. Is that too dark? 
The only real way to find out is to zoom all the way out. Maybe slightly too dark. Remember, we don't really have the original face to work with here. So we're kind of, you know, sadly having to rebuild um, part of his, his facial structure here and try and match it the best we can with the other side of his face. Now we could take part of this eye, paste it over here, uh, and flip it over. And so how, let's, let's try it, why not? So how we would do that is we would create a selection and I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to create a very small selection. Now, I don't want to mess with this layer, so I'm going to go Control J. And what that does is that selection, then uh, if, we, if we close out everything we've got, you have just that one piece, right? So now I'm going to grab the Move tool. So you go to Edit, Transform. And flip horizontally. What that did was it, it took this part of his eye and flipped it horizontally. And that does not look good to me. But it does kind of help this part of his eye. We can, get, we can erase this white part if it's too much. Grabbing the eraser tool and starting to erase. Whoops, I want a very soft edge. This has got a very hard edge. I want a very soft edge on the eraser tool. You know, this is this is just practice until we get it the way we like it. I can move that in a little bit. And that is starting to rebuild his <clears throat> his eyebrow. Still gives a kind of a little bit of strange shape to his his uh his eye and it looks really odd I like this right now but if we zoom out see what it looks like mm, we're getting there there's a lot of work that needs to be done on this part of the cheek and remember this part of that his face was completely gone with that tear as a reminder to show you what that looked like uh, that's what it was and when we zoom in we see that that whole part of his cheekbone was gone there's a little tiny piece of his eyebrow left there um, but for the most part that whole part of his eye is missing and a lot of his cheekbone so if we go back we might be able to brighten up just a little bit and I'm gonna keep working on that uh, instead of boring you to death. Okay, I've worked on that a little bit more. I copied some of the brightness from this eye over here. I have a couple times taken the stamp tool and copied the darker sections and continue to copy into that area um, to try and help. I also uh, pulled up a little bit of this eyeliner, if you will, uh, from from right here into this section here to help reshape the eye that is missing. And if we take the uh, zoom tool, we now have a little bit better shape to his eye. It still looks a little funny to me, but, um, but for now we're going to stop there on his eye and we're going to take and we're going to copy this corner and paste it up here and flip it over and I'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the polygonal lasso tool and we're just going to create a quick selection here. And we're going to hit enter and I'm going to control J to create it on a separate layer. And if you'll notice it is now, let me get rid of this last layer. It is here by itself. We grab the move tool. We're going to move it up here. And we're going to go control T, which gives us the transform tool. And when I have the right handed arrow tool, I can then just rotate it and move it. And now we have to turn on the background image again to 
Let me hit enter to accept that. Then we have to turn the background layer on and we can move it into place and I can nudge it up a little bit. With the up and right arrows, I'm just moving it up and right, up and right, and I kind of like that the way it is, and so I am happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge that layer with the with the uh, with the this layer that I'm blinking on and off, and so I'm going to take these two layers and I'm going to hold the shift key down and hold those two, and I right click. And merge layers. Oh, that's part of his eye. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to merge it with the other image. And so now that layer is merged. So that eye fix is permanent on that layer. If I really didn't like it, I could go back to the previous version and work on it. But now we have these little white corners, little white sections. I'm going to turn those black. So I'm going to grab the quick uh, selection tool and I'm just going to select the white section and I'm going to grab the fill bucket. It's already turned to black but you could switch them back and forth but I'm going to use that black and I'm going to click in that area there and hit Control D and it mostly filled it. Let's zoom in and take a look. <clears throat> so we can do that again. We can grab the quick selection tool and we can select all of that. Oh, we don't want to go that far. Hold the Alt key down. We want to preserve this edge because we like the 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 cool age of that edge. At least I do. I'm going to select that. Okay, now I'm going to take the fill bucket, which is this tool right here. Just use the fill bucket, and that little dot right there tells you which tool you're using. And I'm going to hit fill. And fill again. Alright, control D and that's pretty darn close. <clears throat> when we zoom out and that corner is now black. Okay, and that is a major improvement over uh, what we started with. As a reminder, we started with this. And so along the way we managed to uh, select this corner as we did right here. We just selected that corner with a good quality selection. We added that corner in and just moved it in a little bit with the move tool. We then took a spot healing to uh, brush tool to, to fix that crack that was through here. And later on and uh, I also fixed uh, some of these other cracks along the way. Uh, then we did spot removal. So this is where uh, we took the spot removal. Here's a bunch of spots here that we can demonstrate that on. And using the spot removal tool, we were able to clean up a lot of the dust, dirt, scratches, and spots that were in the photograph. I'm going to go back to the fit and screen. We then did a levels adjustment, which really pulled in our histogram. Uh, brought in much of the detail. We also desaturated it a little bit because when we did the levels tool uh, it made it look a little orange because we darkened it so much. And and then uh, lastly uh, we uh, fixed this corner. We worked on his eye some. We filled in the black spaces. I'm still not crazy about his eye but it's a whole lot better better than what we started with. So that is the Walls family restored. Well there you have it. In the interest of time I went back and I worked on Charles's eye a little bit more. It took some time working on it until I felt a little bit better about it. Sometimes it's trial and error. That's why I make different layers and for each step of the process I'll make small brush strokes one at a time. That way I can undo the small steps without having to trash the entire project and start over again. Slow and steady wins the race. Throughout this Walls Family Portrait Project, you've learned how to use the text tool, various selection tools, the spot healing brush tool, clone tool, level adjustments, content aware fill, zoom and move tools, and several techniques to restore this old image. Those techniques were how to fix cracks, 
remove spots, replacing buttons, rebuilding the little boy's face, replacing parts of the image that were missing, and adjusting the colors and levels. There's a lot to photo restoration, and just like art, the level of restoration is in the eye of the beholder. Personally, I like images to still have the look and age, but still reveals the true character of the people in the images. I'm also one to try to best maintain the original integrity of the image so as not to rewrite history. Remember to always keep the original image intact and make a copy before making any restoration changes. I find my clients vary in the way they want their family portraits restored, but find most agree with me that they want that old photo just cleaned up and restored, but not change too much from the original image. I hope you enjoyed watching the process and perhaps following along with your own image restoration. If you've restored your family image, we would love to see them on the Facebook page for Genealogy TV. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe. You know the drill. Until next time, keep on climbing your family tree.